electrodynamics, finding the electric potential in one dimension for empty space. We did that. I did this in a video, right? So if I have the Laplacian with no charge, the charge density is zero, in one dimension that becomes a second partial spec to x, it's a very easy thing to solve. I get a line. And I picked here the boundary values such that at, v, at x equals zero, v is zero. At x equals one, v is two. Okay. But I want to do this solution another way. I want to solve this equation numerically. Um, so imagine, this is called the relaxation method. Is this scrolling down? Okay, that's fine. So suppose that I have the following, x, v. So suppose I have finite values for these points. So I know, I know that one has to be there, and I know this one has to be there, but these may be anywhere else, somewhere between. So I can label these as V, I'll call it V0, V1, V2, V3, V4. So I have V4 set, I have V0 set. How can I write these finite values, and they're all a different distance delta x apart, delta x, delta x, so I have x values too. How can I write the second derivative as a finite difference? Well, let's write the first derivative as a finite difference. So let's suppose I want to find the derivative at v2. I can say uh, the partial of v2 with respect to x, which is kind of weird to write, but I'm going to do it anyway. Well, the derivative is just a slope. So I'm actually going to take the slope from v3 to v1. So this is going to be v3 minus v1 over 2 delta x. That's the first derivative. Now, what if I want to take the second derivative? Well, the second derivative is just going to be the derivative of the derivative, the slope of the slopes. So I, what I'm going to do is to use these two points right here, the halfway point. So the slope right here, we'll call that uh, v1.5, the partial of v1.5 with respect to x. It's just going to be the derivative between those two. So it's going to be equal to v2 minus v1 over delta x. And then I can do the same thing right here. Uh, the second partial of, I should write as primes. Well, that's fine. Uh, v2.5 with respect to x is going to be v3 minus v2 over delta x. So now the second partial of v with respect to x, which we'll call v2 double prime, is going to be the difference of these two. So it's going to be this v3 minus v2 over delta x minus erasing v2 minus v1 over delta x. All of that over delta x. Okay, so we have some simplifying to do. Obviously, I can divide both sides by delta x. So I get this. I get v3 minus v2 minus v2 plus v1 over delta x squared. And then here I have two of the v2s. So overall, I can write this as, running out of room here. Okay, let's put it up here. Poor space management. v2 double prime is going to be v3 plus v1 minus 2v2 over delta x squared. So that's my second derivative. I can generalize that to any ith element. So the i double prime is going to be the i plus 1 plus the i minus 1. That's i plus 1. That's i minus 1 minus 2 vi over delta x squared. And up here, I have the second derivative is equal to 0. So I'm, I want to solve this for this case. Where that's equal to zero. So what we're going to do is use the relaxation method. That means I'm going to pick some values for the potential. I don't know what they are. I'm just going to pick, okay? And then I'm going to use the values of v1, v2, v3, and so forth to find better values. So I'm going to take v1, 
and then I'm going to use the current values of V2 and V0 to find a better V1. And then I'll go over here and use better values, uh, find a better value for V2. And then I'll find, find a better value for V3. Now that I have better values, I can do it again. I can keep reiterating this process using this equation to find better values. I have to start with a guess, but I can find better values. Now you'll notice here that if I wanted to find a better value for V0, the first element, I'd have V0 plus 1, that's right there, V0 minus 1, there is no value over here. So you can't do it, but that's fine. That's set. That's set. Those aren't going to change anyway. So I'm just going to go in the middle points and change them. So I'm going to change them and use those values to make a better value, and use those values to make a better value. And that's what we're going to do. Now, I'm going to do this in Python. We have a lot of work to do. Uh, in particular, because we're going to have to use lists and loops and animated graphs. So we have a lot of work to do, but this is our main equation right here. Uh, let's just go ahead and make it simpler, right? So here's vi double prime is equal to this. I want to solve for that. So if I multiply both sides by delta x squared, I get vi plus 1 plus vi minus 1 is negative 2 v is minus v2i is 0. So if I solve for this, I get vi is vi plus 1 plus vi minus 1 over 2. So every point I can solve, find by just finding the average of the points before and after it. And it's going to be changing because these are set. And yeah, we already know the solution, right? We know it's a line. So let's get to it. The first thing we're going to do is just to plot the real solution. Then we're going to pick a solution that's wrong and let it relax to the right solution. Okay. Ready for some Python. Now, we do have some work to do in particular about how do we deal with lists and stuff like that. I'll walk you through it. Hopefully it makes sense. But let's just go ahead and make a graph. Uh, G1 is graph. Uh, title is going to be equal to V. Um, empty V in empty space. 1D, 1D V in empty space. And then I'm going to give an X title. Let's just call it X. Don't worry about the units. And then I'm going to give a Y title, wrap that line of V, and then let's put the width. Stay on page. 400, uh, height, 200. And then I need a graph to plot. So F1 is equal to a G curve. Color equals color dot red. I want that red. Uh, so uh, X is 0. Uh, let's say V, I'm going to call it V0 is 0. V1, let's call it V1, is 2. Those are my boundary conditions. Okay. Uh, DX is going to be 0 0.01. That's fine. Uh, while X is less than 2. No, 1. I wanted to go for 1. Uh, I'm going to, let's just go ahead and plot it. F1.plot uh, X and oh here uh, well that's fine it's just going to be 2 times x right that's the potential I did that before and then I'm going to increase my value of x x equals x plus dx and let's run it it's a line no surprise there okay now we need to make our, we need to make three lists. I need to make a list of my new x values. I need to make a list of my uh, potential values. And then I need to make a new list of potential values. Because what I'm going to do is I need to change the new list, right, using the old list. So let's do that. Let's make our empty list. Um, let's call, uh, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to reset x is equal to 0. And then I'm going to say xs is my list of x values, empty. Uh, vs is my list of empty v values. And then vs2 is my new values, empty. I need to fill them in. So what we're going to do is to x is 0 already. Oh, but the list is empty. OK. So while x is less than 1, uh, add to my list xs is xs plus x. So we can add an element to the list by putting it in another list. This, this is the 
I think the best way to visualize it. There are other ways to do it. You can do a pin and things like that. I like doing it this way. VS is VS. I'm going to add just add a zero to this for now. And then VS2 is also a list of zeros. Okay. Now I need to increase my x value. x is x plus dx. And then I'm going to plot that just to make sure things are working. So up here, let's make a second graph. Uh, F2 is G curve color equals color dot blue. Um, let's go ahead and change DX. I, I don't want to have DX too high right now. So I'm going to, when I do this, I'm going to say DX is going to be uh, 0 0.1 for now. Okay. So now I have my list. Let's just print, let's just print uh, our list of excesses. It's not that long. So you can see what it looks like. So there's my list of x values, okay? Zero to one, looks good. Um, let's go ahead and plot our values for VS. So to run through a list, I can say for, um, let's do it this way. For i in range length of excess. So it's gonna go through each element in excess and call it the ith element, just like we're gonna use in our equation. Uh, and what I wanna do is just to plot. So f2.plot, the x value is going to be xsi. I can address the ith element in the excess list with the subscript i. And then the potential is just going to be vsi. That's it. I don't need to increase anything, right? Because it's going to do that with the for loop. So I should have two graphs on here. And there you go. So there's my actual analytical solution. Here's my initial values for v0. Now, I need to change that, right? Because this can't be correct. I have to set the boundary condition. So this boundary condition is already correct, but I need to go up here and change the value of the, at the end. I can leave the rest as zeros, but I need to change that endpoint up there. So what I'm going to do is go up here and address that. After I make my list, I'm going to say vs. The last element in the list is, neg is the index negative 1. So I want to set that equal to 2. And also for vs2, technically I don't have to do that. I'm sorry, negative 1 is equal to 2. So now when I plot it, it, the last element should be correct. There you go. So there's all my elements of 0. I only have 10 anyway, so you get that jump up right there. So it's the wrong solution, but it has the right boundary conditions. What we need to do now is to go through the list um, and as many times as we want and use the old values to find new values. So let's do that. Um, I can leave that there. So let's say n is equal to 0, n is going to be equal to uh, 50. I'm going to do it 50 times. That's my goal here. So what I'm going to do is say while n is less than n. That's going to go through it 50 times. n is n plus 1. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is to go through my list and calculate my new values of vs which I'm going to call VS2. Now I have to be careful. I don't want to go through the whole list. I don't want to start at zero. I don't want to end at the last one. So I'm going to do a loop for i in range, not the whole thing. I'm going to start at one and I'm going to go to the length of x minus one. So that means I'm not going to go all the way through. I'm not going to get the first one. I'm not going to get the last one. And now I can use this to calculate my new, uh, my new VS2. So vs2 i is going to be equal to, now I'm looking at my equation right here on the board. It's going to be vs i plus 1 plus vs i minus 1, all of that divided by 2. So that goes through and finds new values of them. Now, before I do the next loop, what I need to do is to update my old values to my new values. So down here, you can't just say vs is vs2. It won't work. But what I'm going to do is say for i in range of length of vs2, vsi is equal to vs2i. So it's going to go through each element and set them all the same. And then I'm going to keep on doing that 50 times, and then we're going to plot the solution. So I'm just going to go up here and plot this again, which is kind of silly. We're going to do it in a better way in just a second. OK, let's just see if that even works.
So it, you'll notice that it actually does work. So it, this is my first iteration and then it jumped back down here and then replotted the whole thing. And it's very close to being the, the correct answer. Okay, after 50 times. What I want to do, just because it's fun, is to animate that. So let's animate this whole thing. Um, what I'm gonna do right here is put a rate statement. Let's say uh, 100. And I'm gonna say F data is an empty list. So we can make an animated graph. To make an animated graph, you make a, a you add all your data points that you want to plot into a list and then you plot them all at once. Okay. So down here, I need to add my data points to my list. So for i in range length of vs2, it doesn't really matter which one. They're all the same length. Uh, f data is f data plus the x and y coordinates. So the x coordinate is going to be xsi the y coordinate is going to be VSI. And then after I add all those to the list, I can plot them all at once. So F2.data equals F data. And this empties the list right there. So I don't want to do this stuff right here. Okay, let's see what that looks like. So it didn't get the right answer but I didn't give it enough time. So let's give it a little bit more time. Let's do 100 iterations. And there you go. The two solutions agree. What if I have more data points? It doesn't really matter. I can increase the number of points in my, uh, in my list up here. Let's put this at 0 0.05, so twice as many points. It's gonna actually take longer because each time uh, I'm doing more calculations, but it looks cooler, right? And up here, it doesn't go quite to that. I think that's just because of I need to do this. It's not a big deal. Less than or equal to, no, no, up here. Less than or equal to, let's do that. There, that's still not right. That's fine. And it didn't quite get there. I can let it run longer, but you see the whole point, right? I can use these ideas of a finite difference uh, using finite elements and use the bad elements to get better elements and just keep doing it again and again until I want to stop. So let's let this run for even more. Uh, let's run this for 500 and see if it gets there. The animated graph is cool. Um, oh, I see what the problem is. I, I have a different value for, I have 2.01 because my X value isn't quite right, but that's fine. You get the idea. Okay, that's the code. I'll put this link, a link to this code down below. Um, and yeah, that's it. Talk to you later.